Good evening to you. Uh, this is a video on some of the technical aspects of elasticity. So make sure you watch the intro to elasticity as to what uh, elasticity of demand really means. So I think I got my pen working, so this should be uh, more of an adventure here. So, you know, I really think that it, as you watch these things, we should think about, uh, you know, how this applies to the real world here. So uh, which of these products would uh, economists label as having elastic demand? So we've got housing, uh, Hyundai Tucson, an airline ticket, iPhone, Trident gum, and some kind of pharmaceutical drug. Okay, so I want you to think about that. If you want to pause the video for a second, that's a good idea. Okay, so hopefully you thought about that. And really the, the uh, elastic demand one's going to be um, definitely the car. It'll be the airline ticket if you're a vacation traveler, the iPhone if you don't feel the need like you need it for work, uh, Trident gum on a normal situation, and you know we don't know what those pills are for, right? If that's just like a regular aspirin, or if it's something that's really not needed, we'd have a more elastic demand. Oh, we'll change over all of these from elastic to inelastic. Well. Um, housing is the wealthier you get, right? The more uh, housing you can afford and the less part of your budget, right? So it's going to become more inelastic. Uh, car, maybe, uh, you, you know, some sort of need for work or, um, uh, you know, the, 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 back in 2000, 2001, there were, you, couldn't be, you couldn't fly anywhere. So, you know, people were uh, renting cars to go uh, places, right, briefly. An airline ticket, if it's a bereavement situation, it's going to make it more inelastic. Uh, like an iPhone, I already said the salesperson. Um, mint is going to be uh, mint gum is if you have a hot date or if you're at the airport uh, or there's certain people who um, you know need it so their ears don't pop. And then finally the the pills if uh, it's some kind of life saving drug here. Okay, so here's how to calculate uh, price elasticity of demand. So there's a there's a formula that we need to know. Remember what it uh, what it responds to, and this is the formula. So it's the percent change in quantity demanded over the percent change in the price. And so, uh, kind of an easy way to, to memorize this um, is is thinking about quarter pounder, right? So really, you could do a change as a percent. So pens being adventurous here for quantity demanded over uh, the change as a percent, whoops, whoop, hopefully it'll let me go back, there we go, it did, whoa, whoa, we're going all over the place here, okay, I'm back to here, change as a percent in the price, okay, so this is a little easier to, to remember. In, in economics class and a lot of finance classes, Q is always going to refer to quantity. Uh, we do Q subscript D, uh, and then P is going to be price. You'll, you'll see that quite a bit. Marketers use that. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the five P's. So anyway, that's the way to memorize the formula there, and you, you'll need to. Um, so let's do an example here. We've got a demand curve. We already learned about that. And uh, here we've got a 10% increase in price. So that's this value right here. And then we've got quantity falling by 15%. Uh, that's right here. So we just plug this into here. Remember that the quantity is always going to go on top, right? So it's measuring how, how responsive we are to the price change. So it's 15% over 10%. Here you're given that it's 1.5, and that means it's elastic, okay? So I can work through that. I'm getting some interesting uh, things going on here. Um, so how do we get this percent change here? Though? So the formula here for percent change is new minus old over old. Okay, and uh, this this textbook says end value minus start value over start value. Same way as saying new minus old over old. This is actually a useful uh, formula for yourself as a as a consumer, or if you're going to price things, you know, if you're going to change it by a certain percent, or if the Xbox that you want to buy goes up by are down rather by fifty dollars you can think about what is a what percent change that is is it, is it good or bad right so 
if I wanted to do a percent change here from 250 down to 200, I would just plug this into the, the formula here. So uh, this is the price percent change. So 250 minus, whoop. I wonder if that first part will go away. No, it won't. Okay. Minus 200. This is really messy. Sorry. Okay. All over uh, 200. Okay. And when we calculate these things, we just do, do them in absolutes. Okay. So um, you're going to end up with a negative number sometimes, but that's okay. So we got 50 over 200. My pen is just not working right. I just apologize. So uh, that's going to cross out the zeros, and now we're just at 5 out of 20. So that's 1 fourth, right? So it's a 25% price change there, okay? I'm having trouble with the pen. I'm going to have the, um, uh, whoops, I have the textbook here. Go for it, okay. So that's 25%, so that's how I got that, right? Okay, now... Uh, how did we get here? Well, it's, uh, slides are a little bit out of order here, but um, real here's some real world elasticities. Eh, we'll, we'll, we'll skip that and we'll come back to that. Okay. So anyway, uh, now there, there is a problem here. So if we calculate elasticity of demand from 250 down to 200, um, and that goes that takes us from 8 to 12 quantity. And if we go from if we go from point A to point B, we're actually going to get a different number. Okay, so uh, I encourage you to just as practice work through these numbers yourself. You can see how they got this, uh, but they're getting different elasticities whether they're going up or down. So the way to solve for that is to use this midpoint method. So use the the new value minus the old value over the midpoint. And there's two ways to get the midpoint. One is add them both together and divide by two. The other is to say to yourself, what's halfway in between those? You just kind of do it in your head. Either way, you'll get the right answer, uh, whatever your preferred method is on that. Okay. Um, but midway method is pretty cool because uh, you don't have to know uh, which way you're going. Right? It doesn't matter in this case whether you're going um, from 250 to 200 or 200 to 250 because you always have the same denominator there. Okay. So now if we calculate this. So this is the price, uh, is the denominator, and then the numerator. So it's 40% over 22.2%, and we get 1.8. Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, in the notes here, uh, I want you to calculate the elasticity of demand uh, for the hotel rooms. Okay, so uh, you can work through that at the mid midway um, method. It has the um, uh, the answers there, which I've just showed you. Oops, oh well, you can see those in there. But I encourage you to work through them because you'll need to know how to do that for the test. Uh, but beyond the test, you need to know how to do that uh, for your business, right? So you calculate uh, what's going on. So here are the uh, the different um, shapes that you might see here. This is what's called perfectly inelastic demand, right? So the price goes down by 10%, uh, and the quantity doesn't change at all, right? And uh, this one doesn't really exist in, in the real world. I can give you a science fiction example. Um, this would be like if we colonize Mars and there was a company that was selling the air on there, right? We're basically going to pay whatever it takes. But if the price goes down, we're not going to buy any more air. And if the price goes up, we're not going to buy any less, right? So that would be something perfectly elastic and you'll end up with uh, a zero on the demand side. Uh, this is inelastic demand, so we get a price fall by 10%, and we have a quantity increase by less than 10%, right? So the, the numerator here is going to be less than the uh, denominator, and we're going to end up with some number less than 1. So if it's less than 1, that's inelastic demand. That's the rule there, okay? Next, we have unitary elastic. Okay, unitary elastic price goes down by 10%. And we're going to get a 10% rise in uh, the quantity, right? So it's basically if these two are equal, you're going to end up with one, and it's going to be unitary elastic. This is important to think about because if the price uh, goes up, 
then we're going to see an equal fall in the percentage of quantity. Or if we decrease our price, we're going to see an equal increase in quantity or goods sold. Okay. This is elastic demand, pretty common. Okay, it says relatively flat there. Uh, and so we've got the price falling by 10%. We're going to get a bigger jump. The quantity is bigger than this. So this is going to be any number higher than 1. Okay. And uh, finally, perfectly elastic demand. This will come up a little bit later in the course. It uh, does exist for an individual firm. Uh, but basically, the price doesn't change ever. But the consumer is going to buy as much as they can, right? So the quantity is going to be there. Uh, the number will be infinity. I'll never ask you to calculate that, but uh, it does exist. Okay. So here's a little uh, chart we have here. So uh, just to recap, make sure you put this in your notes. The reason we take notes is so we remember later. So uh, if it's zero, perfectly inelastic, doesn't really exist yet. Uh, might in the future though. You know who knows. Uh, if we're below one, it's inelastic. If we're right at one, it's, it's unitary elastic or unit elastic, either one, we use both of those. And anything more than one is elastic. So it's just like something like four that's more elastic than, than something like two, okay? Um, let me show you some uh, real elasticity. So I went a little bit out of order there. Okay, so here's some, some that have been calculated by economists, right? So metal. Um, just slightly elastic furniture slightly elastic that makes sense people hold off on buying furniture uh, new cars 1.14 uh, transportation pretty close to unitary elasticity coca-cola and mountain dew very elastic right lots of substitutes it's a luxury good uh, you can drink water instead right non-business plane tickets is the people going on vacation uh, now over here we have all the these are all inelastic okay oil relatively inelastic Electric power, same thing. Uh, tobacco, much more inelastic. So people that uh, smoke are part of that market. Uh, housing is a category. So goods that are a category are going to have pretty inelastic demand. Uh, books is really interesting to me. Um, okay, this is important for, for you know booksellers like Amazon to think about. Um, pretty inelastic. I think maybe it's the relative cheapness of the price uh, relative to the, the enjoyment that people get. There uh, may be an issue for further study. Uh, food is a category very inelastic, right? We need food or we're dead. However, red lobster dinner can be pretty elastic, right? Finally, eggs. If you think about uh, all the all the bakeries and restaurants that buy eggs, you're going to end up with a pretty inelastic demand curve there. So uh, that is a premier on what's going on with how to calculate elasticity. There are some examples on another video.